Hey, what's up, Dean? It's your performance. We are at the shop. We are sweating. Me. By we, I mean me, myself, and I. All three of us. Uh, so you see, Bobby's Mustang, done. Um, finished up the turbo kit, got it running. There's a short on it running. Um, and he popped up, I believe, Friday. Monday? Tuesday? Wednesday? I can't remember what day it was. But uh, he came. Uh, we finished up doing the K-member bar. He actually went and got the tubing for me so I could be here working on the car. Um, so I did that. He did that. I worked on the car. I basically bent like a little, a little less than a 90 degree bar, fitted into the K-member uh, just ground away some of the tubing that I had left after hole saw on it. Then he was out yesterday. He jacked the car up and he heard a pop. And he sent me pictures. And I'll try to remember to put him in here. And he sent me pictures. And I'll try to remember to put him in here. The anti-roll bar only had about an inch of weld on the tabs to the bar. So it led me to believe that is a do-it-yourself bar. Because if you look at the plate with the bearing, the TIG welds are absolutely beautiful. Perfect all the way around the bearing. And this had one inch of weld. The way those kits should be done is you should fit the bar with the brackets. Mark where you're going to put the bracket or the arm. And then pull it back out. Fully weld the arms onto the bar, outside, both sides. Let it cool. Then stick it up in there. Weld it out. You have to be careful welding it because you'll overheat the bearing and the grease that's in them and the plastic and mess them up. So you got to be careful. My hair or something in my mouth. Probably metal. Um, so he stopped up today. I welded probably 90 percent around the outside of the arm you can't get to the inside of the arm because once it's welded in it's in you can't get that bar back out um so we got that done and i rescaled the car i adjusted all his bars we got all his anti-squat values in and everything i used uh tim mccamus software you put in all the numbers and the hoopla dupla um so he was here real quick this morning we knocked that out and I got Tony's truck in here. Now this truck, I don't know the full story. Uh, I, from my understanding, this was bought as a project to kind of sell. Um, from what I understand, here, here's what I understand. This was bought basically as a financial backing to somebody else. Um, and you know who you are to do these kits and sell so sort of a upgrade flip type of thing time goes on too much time goes on um finally it's sort of kind of done it goes to the shitbag tuner down here his name is mid florida dino uh omar he cannot tune um just period end of story all the shit show goes on. I get contacted to finish the truck, to do the exhaust. Cool, whatever. I do the exhaust. So this is a CX Racing twin turbo kit. My honest opinion of it is it's a piece of shit. Yeah, it's got precision turbos. I personally am not a fan of precision journal entry level turbos. Um, I've never personally had them. Anyways, interrupted again. Uh, to me, the kit is a piece of shit. I've never had precision turbos. I just, I'm not a fan of the price range of them. That, that's the big thing. They might be great turbos. They probably are great turbos. Who knows? Um, but this CX Racing up forward header, you will not catch me dead bolt, bolting a header on like this. This is the stupidest piece of shit. It's the only way to put it. It's the stupidest piece of shit that you could possibly put on. Um, and I'll show you a bunch of things. So you've got 
your spark plug wire. You can see it next to the header. It's burnt. I actually turned it because the boot. Let me see if I can get my phone in. What did I do? Shut the light off or something? No, it's like, I'm leaving that. But you can see the boot is burnt. It was actually sitting on the header. Uh, that one there is looped all in between the tubes. So you know that bitch gets hot. Look at this one. At the coil. Look at how close the coil pack is to the header. Coils get hot. They have to build and disperse energy. That's basically what they do. Um, the boot down there. You can see where my finger is. It's touching the header. This side. Up and forward. Sort of. The first one. It's getting next to the header. Burnt. Second one back there. I don't know if I can zoom in. Yes, I can. You can see. There's my finger. There's my finger. If you look, you can see that little white dot. That's it arcing to the header. And these are good plug wires, expensive plug wires. Let's zoom back out. Next one, all wrapped up to stay out of the way, which is fine, but it's next to the tube. Last one is okay. And then you come up here. This side I tore it all apart already because I'm pissed. Um, this, then you come up to the collector to the T4. The wastegate is teed straight up and off of it. You'll never see me do that. That is not good in any way, shape, or form for the wastegate. Mind you, these tiny-ass turbos on this 6-liter, this is a 6-liter with RHS heads. Those are like $4,000 heads or $3,000 heads or whatever the hell they are. Um, have no freaking clue what's done to the bottom end, if anything's done to the bottom end. Has a who the fuck knows what cam motion cam specced by a tuner quote unquote mid florida dyno which i've never seen anything he he didn't have anything fast and i've never seen him really tune anything fast um so but getting back to this wastegate priority is terrible like boost creep city here you go um that that's just stupid the downpipe tucks and wraps and comes and then the wastegate comes like just a, a a terrible kit to be honest with you um i would never install it this one it took me an hour to unbolt those four bolts because of the downpipe this pigtail in the downpipe this where it turns you know which yeah they're nice welds and all that crap but that's where you have to put the allen wrench one of those extended ball wrench allen wrenches which i despise those things um, and you know, whenever you heat cycle turbos, everything gets tighter. The bolts are damn near impossible to come out. So truck runs like shit. Absolute horrible. Um, you go to crank it and this thing will crank for 30 seconds. It has like the auto crank. As soon as you touch the starter, it just auto cranks and it will crank for a full cycle. Like whatever it is, it may or may not catch. You crank, you hit it again, and it'll crank and crank and crank and crank, and right at the end, it'll catch and start. That tells me it's a cam position sensor. Like we've had a lot of these issues. It's either crank or cam position is is missing out. Um, so I send a file to Ben, who tuned the Trailblazer, and dude nailed it, um, and he's he's super helpful. Um, so I sent him the file. He asked me why why are all the codes shut off? I don't know, I didn't do it. So they shut the cam sensor code off, crank sensor code off, all of those codes, which I think there's there's several codes to each of those in correlation to to the tune file. Well correlation, I don't know, whatever. So there's several of those shut off. All 402s shut off. Um all the misfires shut off. Like that's not the way you tune a car. Um, it, it's just not the way you do it. So I start looking. They're not sure what injectors are in this. ID 1000s. Well, those are too big. They might be these. I, I can't remember. Ends up being Hunter tuned, which 
I'm not going to bash this guy because he clearly puts it on his website. Um, they are junkyard pulled. And I don't know his exact wording on the website. But he tells you very specifically. These are pulled from motors at the junkyard. Decapped and flowed to match. This is not. I would never put those in anything. I probably wouldn't even put them in my own shit. I probably would. But I, I would not put them in any customer's car. Truck. Build. Whatever. Um, this is more of, should be, should be more of a high end build. So you should use FIC, not connection clinic. Um, you know, you should use a good snake eater. That's what I got in here. Our snake eaters. Um, they have all the HP tuner data. So Ben put all the HP tuner data in like just the dumbest shit was done to this. So I get it over here today, and I need to verify cam position, cam position sensor. I pull the plug. It's got five volts. It's got sensor ground. Well, shit. Could the cam sensor be bad? Test the cam sensor. However, it says to do it online. I don't know how to test those damn things. I do it online. I look it up it online. Um, I think it was resistance ohms, resistance whatever. Um, I couldn't really figure it out how to test it. So I said, all right, I start asking the kid that put this truck together. You know who you are. If you're going to do something like this, you better damn well know what you're doing. That That's my firm belief, unless you own it and the mistakes are nobody else's. Like, I don't know. I get tired of people blaming everybody else. But anyways, so... It clicked in my head. This is a Gen 4 LS, which is a 58 crank 4X cam. Cam position sensor is in the front. When you put a cam in it, it becomes a three bolt cam, which doesn't work with the single bolt cam gear shit. So you buy a 4X cam gear. It's pretty simple. Um, something super easy to Google. Like, it's all over the internet. Um, and as a shitbag, supposedly they got all the parts from him. They got all the parts from Rock Auto. They got them from Summit. There's no real clear defined story. I'm sorry, but when I put somebody's shit together, shit, not shit, but when I put somebody's build together, I know where I got the parts, what parts I put in it um, for a while. And I do a lot of cars. I turn a lot of cars out. So... For me to keep track of every one of them, yeah, it's a little bit difficult. But when you only do one, you should know every single damn part that's in it. Or, you know, when you have a file, you should have every receipt in it. You should have everything. It's just as simple as that. Don't blame this guy, that guy, every other guy for your own fucking stupidity. And sorry about that, but that's what it is. If you're going to build something, know how to build it. Don't be a off-the-shelf, bolt the shit together and hope it fucking works when it's somebody else's money. That is not a 4X cam gear. That is a regular Gen 3 cam gear. This guy paid to have this truck built a lot of money. And now he has to pay me to tear the whole fucking thing apart to fix what he already paid to have done incorrectly. Like, it just it pisses me off. So, today I start poking around. Uh, ben had mentioned something with the O2s were messed up, and I'm like, well, shit, the O2s are brand new in it. Um, even the owner of the vehicle said they're brand new, and second set of them. Well, sure shit, here they are. That's an AC Delco part number. That is a Denso part number. So they're not cheap eBay. I mean, they may, might be, but, you know, they're brand new. What the hell is going on? They're all plugged in. They're there. Wait, hold on. Let me show you. You get stupidity. See that blue with the gray cap on the end? That is bank two sensor one plug. There's nothing in it. They had it plugged in bank two sensor two, which gets shut off because there's no catalytic converters. This side was plugged in the the O2 is way down there in the downpipe, way way down there. It was plugged into bank one sensor one plug. So now the ECU is seeing two different things. It wants to see a really clean signal on this side, which it's not going to. Um, and it's 
looking for the signal on this side, which I would only imagine the turbo, the heat in the turbo will mess with that O2. Um, that's why they need to be pre-turbo. Like your narrow bands should be pre-turbo. Your wide band, which this has one all the way back in the X pipe, um, it's really, really far back, which to me is, is again, is fucking stupid. Me personally, I'd have the wide band right here and I would have another bung right here. And I would have the harness to where you could pull it out of here and put it in here. You could read each bank. Nope. Super douche down the way. It's got to be in the X pipe. You got to see both banks. I personally don't want to see both banks. I see each individual bank. Um, then you could see if there's a huge discrepancy between the two banks. That'll give you an idea if plugs are bad, plug wire, coil, injector, something, anything, hole in the fucking piston. Who knows? Um, so now I have to fight with this damn truck. I've been working on this all day, and this is not something that takes all day. Uh, the timing cover was fairly simple to get off. The crank pulley was a bit because I can't do it from underneath because the horizontal no airflow intercooler is in the way of getting underneath. It looks like you can get underneath from there, but you can't because the pulley's way out over, like, sits at that cross member. You can see about a power steering pulley. So you have no way to get your arms up in there. You got to be a fuck contortionist. I mean, this is a truck, dude. Seriously? It's huge amount of space in here why not put the intercooler in here because you're not a fabricator and you can't make brackets to hold the hood latch which you really wouldn't even have to do a whole lot to hold the hood latch but make sure you cut a, or miss or i don't even know why this doesn't go down like it's crazy to me so there's all kinds of janky shit don't do this shit like, especially when it's somebody else's money I took the water pump off and the damn heater hose broke. It's down in there somewhere because this dumb shit heat shield cut the fucking hose. So, of course, I'm the guy that touches it and it breaks. Well, now I'm going to be the guy to replace it because I don't give people back shit. Um, I offered the owner the option to tear this turbo kit off. Do it naturally aspirated. He's not for that. This is not not what i would call a reliable build at all you this is his second set of plug wires the truck has less than 200 miles on it i think less than yeah less than 200 miles on it or right around 200 miles on it whatever it has second set of plug wires like you're gonna keep going through plug wires that's just the way this shit is that to me oh the other issue too the fucking map sensor like you should know boosted shit and stock shit Stock one bat bar map sensor out of the GMC 2500. Instantly, I saw that and I I tell the tuner, like, I don't know how this guy tuned it with a one bar map sensor. He goes, You can't. I said, That's my understanding. He said, No, you can't. I said, Yeah, that's, that's my understanding, but that's what was done. He was kind of done at that point. So. I have to put a two bar map sensor in there. Just shit like this. Like, it, it, uh, anyways, I don't know. I'm getting carried on. The kid that did it, he's a nice kid. His personality is nice, but this is not within his capabilities. You have to be capable of doing this shit. People all day just walk in and just ask dumb questions, interrupt me, stop me from doing what I'm doing. Um, yeah, you, you, I don't know. Well, I'm annoyed. Not happy. Um, and I don't know how to make it right. I'm going to put the cam gear on. I ordered one, overnighted it, because now I got a dead vehicle on my lift. Got the cutlass coming to get the suspension parts put on. Hi. Um, yeah, I mean, this stuff is, is scary to me that... I know there's people out there that do this stuff. I don't know. You take people's money and you play with people's money. If it's not your money, you can play with it. You know, the, the other piece of it too, I don't even know what these wires are. I, I don't want to look and see what they are. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of anal about wiring. I, I like to make it look nice and neat and to the best of my, you know, you don't 
stab wires into the fuses. That's not how you do it. I have no idea what these are for. A black wire, to me, that's a ground. Oh, look, they're labeled. Yay. Watch me yank this fucking wire out. AC compressor. So that must turn on the fan. Ignition switch, 12 volt. That's cute. So the pink is your 12 volt ignition switch. Your black is trigger to turn the fan on when you turn the AC on. Oh boy. Um, so yeah, this is not the way you do shit. Um, oh, I hate these shoes box covers. It's just not the way you do it. Uh, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do my best to fix as much as I can. Um, does even though I've explained it a hundred times that this is not his realm. Oh, the other uh, other issue, cam sensor. When I took this out, and you can see if I can get it to focus, you can see the silver around the O-ring. And right there, you can see how it's smeared. It's down inside those holes. This was absolutely slathered and never sees. You do not put never sees on a sensor. That's not what that's for. Uh, you could put Vaseline. You can put anything else. Assembly lube. I don't care what you put. These do get stuck because the plastic does swell. Because this plastic is exposed to a bunch of heat. So these do get stuck and swell up. But you don't put never sees. That's not going to stop it from swelling up and getting stuck in the cover. Um, I got the collector off the driver's side. Like, explain to me how that exhaust is supposed to open the wastegate. And I know the wastegate's controlled by boost pressure and all that, but it does rely on exhaust pressure. Like, yeah, whatever. But look at the heat in that ring. That is not from draw. I mean, not from welding it. That is from the back pressure in this. So, the only spot I have is right here. And I have to do it kind of on a tiny bit of a forward angle because the stupid wastegate dumps right there that's O2 I already ordered two Dentos not the cheap ones um, so I got those sensors good thing they're the same part number I had to order the cam gear and overnight it from tick uh, and if you do need the cam gear tick has it online it's like 27 bucks. I paid $30 to have it overnighted to me. At 57 bucks, it's still not a horrible deal. Uh, there was another website that wanted to overnight it to me for 80 bucks, and I was like, you know, and the gear was gear was more expensive. It was like $38 for the gear or something like that. So 27, 20, 27, 50 or something like that for the gear. Um, that'll be here tomorrow. I, uh, O2 bungs I think will be here tomorrow because I only have one left I give one to Bobby Bobby um, I can give it to him I weld it in oh another thing see I'm an idiot ARP crank bolt now I cleaned it already but you can see the molly loop great put it on the washer but you see it on the entire bolt the threads were absolutely slathered in molly lube you do not put molly lube on your crank pulley bolt I don't I don't care what anybody says I will not put molly lube on this bolt I know it needs to be torqued and all that shit and that helps the torque setting but these bolts not because they're ARPs but any crank bolt has a tendency to walk out um, that's why GM uses, it was here, it's in the crank. GM uses like an adhesive around the big washer. The washer is built into the bolt. They use like an adhesive that locks it against the crank. That's why they're a nightmare to get them out. We Loctite these bolts. Red Loctite, 
good bit on there torque it down real good this bolt was less than ratchet tight i'll put it to you that way whether it was backing itself out or never tightened in i would assume it was backing itself out um which could end as a really bad day so like just i told myself i wouldn't look because i knew i'd find shit and just from fixing shit which is why i'm not a freaking mechanic you start fixing something you find more and more and more and more and more and i don't doubt that i will find a bunch more wrong with this truck before it leaves here and that is very unfortunate um but anyways appreciate you watching appreciate you listening to me scream and holler like a bitch. have a good day like subscribe hit the bell later